Hey everyone, welcome back to Get a Heck Yes. I have a friend, I can say you were on my podcast before. This is your second time. His name is Nathan Chansky. I feel like everyone and their mamas know you, but he <laughs> is a wedding photographer. He's a business coach and course creator based in the Grand Rapids of Michigan. He runs a full-time wedding photography business, an education and coaching platform for photographers, and literally one of my favorite podcasts, Passion with Purpose podcast. Welcome, Nathan. Oh, thank you so much for that introduction, Chris. I really appreciate it. And yeah, just thank you so much for having me. It's amazing to be here. Yeah, you're super famous now. Um, <laughs> I was going to say like some podcasts, sometimes I just don't want to listen to business podcasts anymore hmm. because it's just, I just feel kind of overwhelmed and I want to hmm. listen to like call her daddy. But for some reason, your podcast, I can listen to it anytime and it doesn't make me feel overwhelmed. Wow. That's a, that's high honors. I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah. I totally get that too, where some podcasts I don't like, I almost feel like I have to take them in doses because if I, if I hear so much at once, yeah, like you said, I get overwhelmed and I'm like, whoa, I feel like, yeah, just a lot that I need to do. But, um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's really good. Yeah. Feedback. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like a college lecture and I'm like, uh, I wasn't really like that into school. So, totally. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, everyone's always like, Oh, Nathan Chansky. I love him. He's so nice. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's really I good. Know. You I always wonder that. what people say about you, like behind closed doors. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's good that it's good things. <laughs> but anyways, how have you been? What you've been up to? I've been super good. Yeah. I right right now, this time of year, um, I take it pretty slow. Like I had a, a busy fourth quarter, but then my December, I always like to take really chill and just kind of like focus on rest and, um, kind of getting back to just like my more like my personal life, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's been a really slow December so far, which I guess we're only in the first week of it. Um, but yeah, it's great. I'm like working around my house doing like home reno projects. So it's fun. Isn't it cool to just be like, I'm slow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, like wake up at like 830. It's like, whatever, <laughs> who cares? That's awesome. How many like weddings did you have this year? And like, what did your year look like? This year I took, uh, I think 10 or 11. And so, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that like heavy in the wedding side of things um, because I've definitely started pulling back, but um, with more of like, you know, I launched my signature coaching program this year, the business blueprint. And so that was definitely like a lot of, it was, it was a big undertaking for sure. And so, um, yeah, that launched in the beginning of November. And then, you know, like right after that you have like black Friday sales. And so, and then even like a lot of my weddings and just like different travel engagements were in the fall, like August to October anyways. So it was definitely, um, yeah, a busy, uh, latter half of the year, but, um, it was good, all good stuff. And, and yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. So. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to one of your podcasts, like I always do, but you mentioned that like you were still straddling like the wedding photography business and the yeah. coaching business. And, you know, it is kind of like these two minds that you have to kind of switch and it could be it's very so difficult. True. So I resonated yeah. with that so much. Yeah. You know, and no one tells you that no one tells you that you're going to be going through that process of kind of like, you really are learning to run two different um, businesses and as similar as they are, they do still feel very different in many regards. And and so you have to, I mean, you're serving different types of people ultimately for different goals. So it's definitely um, a bit strenuous at times. And I think next year I'll probably even take more of a step back um, from weddings. So yeah, it's... It's interesting, but yeah, I don't know. It's just all like learning experiences and um, yeah, haven't gotten in over my head quite yet. So I think we're yeah. we're good so far. Yeah. My brain is so tired, but in the night I'm like, <laughs> you just like, oh shoot, I got to make a reel for my photography. Oh, I know I got to make a reel for my, my coach. <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> AI has helped me tremendously, but tell the audience um, a little bit about the business blueprint and then like how many photographers you got and tell, um, just maybe like your hurdles that you went through this year and how you overcame it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So yeah, the business blueprint is basically, um, it's kind of like the aggregate sum of everything that I would put into a business course for photographers. And uh, instead of, you know, I, I kind of initially when I got into education, I was kind of like, okay, I don't really know 
what I want to make courses on or what I want to make products on or a coaching program or whatever. Um, because there's so many different options, right? And so many people do different things. Um, and so I think at the beginning, I started thinking, well, I can do multiple different offerings and different um, types of things. But then I think as I got further and further into it, I realized that I just had a really strong heart for teaching people how to scale their business or not necessarily scale their business, how to grow their business to their first six figures, at least. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of that comes down to the way someone brands themselves the way someone markets themselves and the way someone sells themselves. And I think a lot of photographers I found w did not know how to do that. And there was a lot of like uh, misinformation out there about how to do that. And even just like information that was feel good, but it wasn't actually helpful. And so I was like, okay, so what if I were to create something like that, that would have been honestly perfect for me years ago when I was in the same predicament that maybe an average photographer was trying to get to those first six figures. What if I created a program like that, that was just my signature program that I poured all my heart into. Um, so that's really what I, that's really what I built and I tested it and, and honestly built the program for about a year before I even launched it. Um, and so then finally launched it and yeah, so exciting to see like how big it's grown and just like, I mean, it's not like it's massive, but I, I guess what I'm saying, it's, it's really exciting to see how, um, we have a little community in there, um, and just kind of the wins that I'm seeing are so encouraging. Um, and then your second question was, what are, what's like one of the biggest hurdles I over hey, in I always do like three, three tier questions. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, shoot, one of the biggest hurdles I think I overcome or am overcoming is probably what we just talked about is like how to really navigate those two businesses. And, you know, on the one side, I'm coaching photographers and teaching them how to grow their business. And then the other side, I still am a photographer and I'm still um, figuring out how to best serve those clients that I have booked yeah. Uh, while still pouring my heart into the other side and the ed education side of things. Um, and, and then even also just like giving myself the space to evolve and, and, you know, just tell yourself like, okay, yeah, it's okay that years ago your heart was so heavily interested in serving clients. But now if your heart is more into educating other photographers, that's okay. And that's something that you kind of have to uh, you just have to kind of roll with what, what, you, where your heart's at on that kind of a thing. And, and even just like where the, the business demand is going as well. So that was maybe a big hurdle and I feel like I'm still overcoming it in a way, but yeah, for sure. It's good. No, I think last time I, you're on the podcast, I was, I feel like it's been like a year. Yeah. Must've been. We, we talked about social media, but, um, I was still like a baby coach and, you know, I have after like hundred podcast episodes, coaching, um, master classes. I did learn and I put them into three buckets. Like, you know, you said branding, marketing and sales. So, um, it's interesting because when I started coaching, it's like, you know, you just want to give them the answers, but you know, you think there's like one thing, but it really, there is a thousand things, but it goes mm -hmm. into like these three buckets. So mm -hmm. I like how you said that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, 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 I found that, and even like when I talk about branding, I'm even thinking, sometimes I call it product instead of branding. Cause I think a big part of that is like, what is in your uh, product and even like the, the pricing you have, the, how you communicate the value of the pricing, um, what's actually in the offer that you provide to people. So, so yeah, it's, it's definitely something that I keep coming back to. I'm like, yep, it's these three that pretty much uh, really kind of build the bedrock of your business. You know, if you can't, it's like, if you can't sell or if you can't get eyeballs on your brand, or if you don't have an incredible offer, like you can't really do much in your business. So you got to get those three figured out. Yeah, totally. Tell me, uh, or tell the audience a little bit about like your podcasting journey, because I remember the day that you started, it was just kind of similar time when we, we talked and, um, I just felt like I listened to all of them, but, and you evolved a lot and you started talking to interviewing your past students, um, mm -hmm. and you just give like really great value, but what has like your podcasting journey been like? Yeah, totally. Great question. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I am so new to podcasting. I, I think, I mean, obviously I've been doing it for over a year now, probably more like a year and a half now. 
Um, but I still feel very new to it in, in so many senses because I know that, you know, so many people out there have been doing it for like a decade. Um, and I think it's <laughs> it's a very rewarding slash, I guess, like, yeah, I'd say it's very rewarding to do a podcast because you can just go deep with people. You know, it's not just like a 30 second reel. It's not just like an Instagram caption. It's not um, just something quick, like an email or whatever. Uh -huh. It's, it's actually like a full piece of content and it, it lasts for, yeah, like maybe 30 minutes or up to an hour or something like that. And so I really like the impact that I can make with the uh -huh. podcast more than, you know, other forms of content where the other forms of content are almost kind of like a hook to get people interested. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I've really found is really cool. And I, I think sometimes, you know, you can get, worried about, well, is this podcast resonating more than like, um, or this episode is resonating more than like another episode. And like, why is that? And like, how do I recreate that? And like, you know, all this types of stuff, which is really good to do when you're creating content. But, um, sometimes I can get in my head and be like, well, what if this isn't like the topic people want to hear from me? Or like, what if this is whatever? But I think I go back to what would I want to listen to? And what really resonates with me, what really sparks my just like energy to talk about something. And so I find that that has served me well of just like talking what talking about what I think is important and, um, you know, like bringing on people that I think people need to hear from and all these types of things, because at the end of the day, like that's what's going to create my podcast as opposed to someone else's podcast. If I start doing what other people are doing or I start doing stuff that I don't fundamentally want to do, then I'm going to be creating this uh, like persona of, of Nathan Chansky as a brand that doesn't uh -huh. align with who I really am. And then it's just going to be draining for me and I don't want to do that. So to me, it's like, hey, if I don't like, for instance, like I don't want to talk about gear, right? Like that's just like not my thing. And so maybe uh -huh. a gear a, a chat about gear on my podcast would be like, oh, like something people love to hear from me. I or never like, chatted about gear yet. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I don't want to be talking about gear in like yeah. <laughs> five or 10 years. So I'm not going to talk yeah. about it now. I'm not going to build my brand and that reputation. So, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a journey and I'm still figuring it out, but I love it so far. Yeah. I mean, totally. I, I was just looking at my episodes like, oh, weird. Like last week I had someone talking about like tarot reading this week. I had human design next week. I have micro dosing. So it is like everything I'm interested. In. I don't put too much thought into it, but I'm like, if you're interested in it, then I yeah. think your, your audience will be interested in yep. it too. Your people will come. Yeah. So interesting. Um, interestingly enough, I went to wedding MBA a couple of weeks ago in Vegas and you know, I went through the whole like brochure, like every day, it was like three, four days and mm -hmm. no one talked about personal branding. Interesting. Wait, what you said wedding MBA? Yeah. My, my husband always makes fun of it because he's like WNBA. <laughs> like, are you in that's, the WNBA? <laughs> that's so funny. Wait, is yeah, it like so a conference? I've never heard of this. It's a conference for all wedding pros and okay. there's like a bazillion people there and it's, it's really cheap. So a lot of people go um, mm -hmm. and you can go to classes all day and there's a big like um all the booths um it's a big convention at that's awesome um but yeah one of my favorite things to do is go through the whole brochure and then no one talked about branding so Crazy. Nathan, what are we gonna be talking about today what is our hot topic yeah we want to talk about personal branding a little bit and we're gonna throw in some mindset because this is gonna go live probably right in the new year yeah, so we'll talk awesome. about all of it we'll just banter but Tell me about like your personal brand. Sure. Yeah. Um, personal branding is, is a massive topic, you know, and there's so many different things that, that kind of go along with like what makes a personal brand. Um, I think in a nutshell, what makes a personal brand is just, you're basically tying the value of your brand and uh, your offer and different things like that, you're tying the value of that primarily to you as the person rather than to the services or products that you provide to somebody. So for instance, for a photographer, um, you're tying the massive value on you as the photographer and you as the human so that when people come and you know, they're in your inquiry box or they DM you or they follow you on Instagram or whatever. They're doing so 
because they're, they feel that connection with you as the person rather than only just connecting with your images or connecting only with like, you know, a certain thing you provide in your packages, right? And so what I think is so powerful about personal branding is that in our day and age of 2023, you know, or 2024, whenever this airs, it's, it's a, it's a culture that loves connection and human connection mm -hmm. because we are in kind of like a, a scarce amount of it. And so, or it's a scarce resource and, and there's so much that can just be, um, kind of like thought of as just professional and businessy and, you know, this product and this product. Right. Um, but it's that human connection that people want more than anything. And especially I think when it comes to a photographer, it is a very personal experience with the photographer. So personal branding really sets again, that value on you as the person rather than just your work, uh, which is ultimately what makes you stand out because no one can be you. So yeah. that's kind of personal branding in a nutshell. Yeah. I, I love what you just said there. I never really like described it like that, but it's so true. But I, I show my, I show your uh, Instagram account to like, you know, some of my closest friends and Aww. one of them, my videographer, and he's just like, he looks like he got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like what? He's got something to say. <laughs> like, you, yeah. just looking at your Instagram, like this guy's got something to say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll, always got something to say, right? Yeah. And I, I remember our last conversation, you're like, wow, like, you know, um, your clients say, oh, this guy is really generous with like, <laughs> you know, sharing all his tips and trips to other photographers. Yeah. Like, he, he must be really good. Like, let's book him. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it is a real thing that people connect with people. And when you show up, you know, passionately and you show up in an energy that feels kind of like we were just talking about the podcast where you're showing up with topics and, with things that you just want to share about that are passionate for you, it's going to show because, or it's going to connect with people because they're like, Oh, I finally am getting in touch with a human. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and they want right. to connect with that human. So yeah, it totally, it totally is a thing. It, it, it's, it's weird sometimes to feel, it feels like you're selling yourself, yeah. um, but part of it is, and I think that's okay. And I think that's what makes it so beautiful when someone does book you because of you, because they just trust you and they connect with you more than anything. Instead of just being like, we have to have our gallery look just like the gallery you delivered for this other person, or we're going to pit you up against another photographer because you have similar styles, or we're going to, we're going to compare you to this photographer because your prices are so similar and they're cheaper or something like that. But if you can really tie that value to who you are, well, you don't really compete with anybody else, you know? Totally. Some people you just, you could tell that like, just get you, right? Exactly. Yep. And you'll connect with those people. And then the people who don't connect, you won't connect with them and they'll go their own way. And that's totally fine. Yeah. We have to like really understand this because I know people are so scared to show their face on Instagram. And yes, I was there. Like I still... I talked about my coaching program when I just started. I was like sweating profusely. I was like stumbling over my words. Sure. And like I put it up there because I just want to, you know, show that, you know, I improved in the past year and show to myself that um, India Uro was on your podcast and I really resonated mm -hmm. with um, that episode. And she actually said, you know, she, her personal brand is so strong that she's bulletproof mm -hmm. because of the connection that she has with her clients. And, Mm -hmm. That kind of stuck in my head because I am confident in my photography business, but sometimes I do start comparing myself if someone goes a different direction or I get ghosted, but I just have to remember that like, um, the connection I have with my clients is like no other. And that mm -hmm. is bulletproof for the rest of, you know, the next 20 years until like I'm on, um, you know, a walker mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. to continue to do weddings because um, the way I make people feel and, you know, 13, 14 years of experience, the things that I've learned, like no one could really take that away from me. And that podcast really helped me um, understand that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. India is definitely somebody who has an incredible personal brand and it shows. And I mean, I think if you have that mindset going into something like an inquiry process or even going into something like posting an Instagram story, you can then confidently show up as yourself and be okay if someone rejects you. You know what I mean? Because you're just like, hey, if someone rejects me, 
that means that they weren't for me in the first place. And, and so I'm happy that they like rejected me now instead of like hanging on a little bit longer. You know what I mean? And I always say to the extent that you repel people, you will probably also attract people mm-hmm. or even to the extent that people, I mean, this sounds like a little bit aggressive, but to the extent that you like annoy people, you will probably also really, uh, make people passionate about who you are because again it's the human if if you just give people like this lukewarm version of yourself no one's going to have any uh what would i say strong thoughts about you but if you give someone a passionate or a i mean this is crazy but maybe even a polarizing version of yourself then people are probably either going to love you or maybe strongly dislike you and that's okay but then you get the people that love you and that's and yeah. and then you're their number one you know what i mean yeah i know we talked about our last episode like you had like a god moment when you just you know were ready to like give up but then you really like honed into your craft and became like who you really are like nathan chansky and that mm-hmm. everyone knows and loves now but in the beginning like what did it take to start just showing up every day and like posting these reels every day and like making this crazy content? Um, it's humorous. It's so you, but I'm sure that was kind of hard in the beginning. Like, did you have any mentors or like, did you like, are you a Gary Vee fan or like what made you like be like, Hey, I'm going to do this full, full out. Yeah, that's a good, that is a good question. I don't, I really didn't have any like, mentor at that point necessarily. I think it just came down to me of, I guess, I guess I just had this moment where I thought to myself, I, you know, I have to live with the decisions that I make Mm. and I have to either reap the benefits or the consequences of my action or inaction. And nobody else does. So if I want to show up doing something, or even if I I don't necessarily want to show up doing something, um, and somebody thinks a certain thing about me, uh, that's fine because they don't have to live with the action that I take or don't take. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like someone can think I'm cringe. Someone can like hate what I'm posting. Someone can just be annoyed by me. Someone can be like, Oh, like, I don't like what you're, I don't know, whatever. They can have whatever thoughts they want to have, but I wake up every day and live the life that I live. Like they don't have to live the life I live. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I don't, I can't afford to care what somebody else thinks of me at that point. And so I'm just going to do what I need to do to get the result that I want to get. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really the point it came down to for me. And um, I know it sounds like maybe a little bit hyper dramatic and like cutthroat to think that way. Uh, but but sometimes I think you have to get there and you have to kind of uh, almost like hold your feet to the fire and just be like, okay, do you want this or don't you? Because if you do want this, you'll do anything it takes to get Mm -hmm. there. Even if it means like posting something that feels really vulnerable to post or just really like yourself to post. Um, And no one's going to make you do it. And you just have to like get it between your ears that you're just going to do it. You know what I mean? Um, So yeah, I think that's the point I came to was just like nothing else ultimately matters in terms of what people think of me. I just, yeah. I just need to do this for me. And yeah. And I think also, yeah, it was a big benefit to me that the Lord showed me that this is what I was supposed to be doing anyways. Mm-hmm. And so I had that confidence of like, okay, well, I'm just going to follow his direction and no matter what, it's going to work out even if I fall on my face. So yeah, it's just, <laughs> you got to get to those, you got to get to those crazy, like, looking down the cliff moments of like, okay, are you going to do this or not? And are you going to jump or not? I mean, you don't have to, but you got to make a call, you know? So this is kind of the point I came to. No, I love that. And I think what you said is very freeing. I talk a lot about this with my therapist. It's like, how do you not want like outside validation? Um, but when you keep wanting outside validation, like um, if you get one negative comment or 
you know, someone doesn't like your, your post or your friend doesn't like your post, like it could ruin your whole entire day. And it's like, yeah. do you really want to live your life like that? Or do you want to live in like your power, your purpose and your success? Because, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> I haven't bought anything from anyone that hasn't shown their face on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. Um, because why would I trust them? Mm -hmm. um, so true. And now, you know, I'm saying the same thing over and over again on social media, but it feels very natural and authentic. And I don't have to be like, oh, did they like it or not? Because I know what I'm saying that like, I'm in my power. So yeah, so, yeah. I, yeah, I think so often too, with artists, they like to hide behind their work, which is fine. Um, and I don't think there's anything like inherently wrong with that. I just know for myself, I don't connect with that at all. Um, I, th I know that like when artists never show their face, um, even if they are an amazing artist and they are an amazing photographer or whatever it is, I'm just bored. Honestly, I'm bored. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's like, yeah, you took an awesome photo, but I'm not like connecting with you at all. Um, uh -huh. And even like the idea of, you know, I think a lot of artists think that showing up in video is like this, oh, what would I say? Almost like this uh, less credible form of content or um, it's like a watered down or like cheap version of art. And it's just like, yeah, that's fine. You can think that. But the fact of the matter is, is it's human connection. Uh -huh. Um, and so if you can be that person who again, connects with people, well, I think your art goes that much further. Um, and we also have to remember that, you know, our art or our content or whatever it is, is going to always be accepted by some and rejected by others. And the more that we can look at that as just data and the more that we can look at that analytically rather mm -hmm. than emotionally and tying our self-worth and identity to it, the better, because then we can just keep moving and we can just be like, oh, that reel flopped or, oh, that post didn't do very well. And, oh, like me showing up in my stories today, like didn't really seem to connect with that many people. And you just move on yeah. and you can take that as like data. And then the next time, maybe something did connect really well and you can be like, oh, awesome. And, and instead of even, even from something that performs well, instead of finding your self identity and worth in like that dopamine hit, like just being like, no, like that's just data for me. Um, that performed well, that did not perform well. Um, and sometimes you can look at that and be like, okay, so that's that that's how i'm going to direct myself for next time and and you know it doesn't have to be this highly emotional oh no this is a reflection of who i am as a person and a human no it doesn't have to be it's just, <laughs> it's just all data just see it analytically yeah no one cares <laughs> yeah literally no one cares as much as you think it's so true no one's watching you as close as you watch yourself oh my god okay so i talk a lot to a lot of photographers and professionals same as you um, and everyone's like multifaceted, you know, they're into mental health, they're into goth, but they love light and airy, but they love moody and then, but they love pops of color. Um, and then they're animal lovers and they they love legally blonde. And, you know, like there's so many different things, like how does one like kind of hone in to their personal brand to like what they want to put out to the world? Ooh, good question. Um, so let me get, let me, let me see if I'm getting your question correct. So are you kind of saying like, how do you bring it all together? Yeah. Like in like a cohesive way where people are just like, okay, like where, um, they go on your webpage or your website and your Instagram and they just kind of see you, you know, and like, it doesn't seem messy and they're not confused. And, you know, when they go to a shoot, they're just like so confident in themselves. I know that comes with practice, but yeah, do you have tips and tricks to like kind of hone into your personal brand. Uh, I don't have tips and tricks, but I can give you what I've learned. I think that in so many ways, people over obsess about what their like brand pillars are or whatever, uh -huh. um, or what their uh, niche is or whatever. And I think that's, I think there's a time and a place for that. And I'll get to that in a minute, but I think it's always good to remember that. And I've heard multiple people say this and it's always resonated with me, um, that you are your niche and you don't have to have your niche be something else outside of you. It's just you. Like if you, like for me, you know, like you could say my niche is that I am a photographer and I'm an artist and I am a husband to my wife, Kayla, and uh, I live in the Midwest. Um, I have a dog. I am a Christian. Um, I am also an educator. I'm a coach. I'm a podcaster. Um, 
sometimes I share about my home reno projects, like literally the most random things ever, right? All of that is my niche, right? Like that's that's what I talk about. That's who I am. Um, so I'm going to share all of it, right? And then I think it's really good to remember that there is also certain buckets of your content that lend themselves to that type of multi-diversity in content more than others. So to me, I always think of it as like, okay, there's certain parts of my content that are better suited for like cold audiences. And there's certain parts of my content that are better suited for warm audiences. Same thing for hot audiences. And so I look at my, like, let's say my Instagram stories as my warmer, hot audience, right? People that already have signed up to follow me. They know a thing or two about me. And so in that space, especially since it's like a 24 hour cycle of content, you know, it's so low stakes and I can kind of share anything in the kitchen sink that I want to there. Right. Uh Um, But then there's other content that maybe is more like an Instagram reel. Right. Or maybe it's something like, you know, my homepage on my website. Right. Um, These are things that much more likely a cold audience member Uh who has no context for me is going to see for the first time. And so for those people, I want to be very specific. And that's kind of where I get like more like quote unquote niche specific to who I am and what I do in terms of like the offer I, the mm-hmm. offer I have or the, the, the value I provide. Right. And so for me in that space, I'm going to be sharing things like, you know, specific things to my coaching program, specific mm-hmm. things to my photography offers, you know? Um, And then I think also it's really good to remember that there's also a sequence, I think, of sharing your niche as well. If somebody was immediately, you know, if if they were, if they were starting their, let's say brand today, I would say your sequence needs to be that you need to have, you need to pick a space and be laser focused on that space before you start showing people the multifaceted parts of who you are. Uh, And I don't say that because there's anything for you to hide. What I say that though is because like just being blatantly honest without like trying to step on toes, nobody cares about you yet. So you have to give them a reason to care (laughs) about you. It's, it's true though. Um, and so to me, that's, that's really how I started things was, you know, when I first started growing, I was like, I'm going to stay very specific to, my photography and what I'm educating in photography and that's it. And then I think over time I started sharing things about more of my personal life um, because I gave people a reason to care. Right. And it was like, Oh, like I trust this guy. I know this guy and I know what he's about. And I kind of want to go a little deeper with him now. I want to see a little bit behind the scenes of like who he is. You know what I'm saying? Um, It's kind of, it's kind of like as if uh, maybe you were listening to a business podcast or something like that and you were getting great value from that podcast. And then probably, you know, five, 10 episodes in, you're going to be like, now, who is this person? I kind of want to know a little bit yeah, more about yeah. their personal life uh-huh. and who they are as a person, you know, but you didn't, uh-huh. you didn't care on episode one. And that's okay. Um, so there is a little bit of a sequence to it as well. So that's kind of how I bring everything in together is, is that understanding that we are multifaceted and dimensional and that's good. Um, and let that be your niche. But then also I think there's a sequence to it as well. Oh, that's interesting. It is kind of like, I think what you're saying is say someone wanted to shoot like crazy party, like, you know, high fee weddings, like on the dance floor, like really tap into that and like perfect it and like know everything about it, post about it, study it. Um, you know, your whole brand is that and talk about it a lot. And then you can start sharing stuff about you and that, like what you like to do for fun on the weekends, playing pickleball and, you know, stand up paddleboarding and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can, (laughs) you can share all that stuff like at the beginning if you want to, but just understand that people probably won't care as much (laughs) as later. And that's okay. Like you, you, you have to be like willing to kind of slug out that process of building the audience before people have a reason to kind of care about who you are as the person. Um, but I think it will come over time and yeah. And then you're able to just share more about yourself. Wow. Yeah. I think this is really good for people just uh, starting out or even if you want to refresh on your brand and you just feel like you want to 
tap into your personal brand um, this upcoming year. But let's talk about some mindset tips or anything about mindset for the new year. Like what is, how is your mind right now? Like what, how, what are you doing to goal set? Um, what are you doing to be organized next year? What are your goals? Tell me everything. Totally. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good question. I feel like I haven't put all that in a super digestible, um, nutshell format quite yet for myself. I think as I look into 2024, but then it's also been in my mind, you know, for 2023 as well, a big mindset that I, I think I really stick to and, um, something that I really want to kind of build into my business is longe longevity mm. and, um, the idea that, you know, in some senses, I think there's this push to grow everything fast uh. and to just rocket launch yourself into the stratosphere of business or your goals or money, whatever it is, as quick as humanly possible um, and spare no expense mm. for doing so, right? I completely disagree with that. I think that in so many ways, we have to think about like, okay, but is this sustainable? Is this a sustainable action plan? Is this a sustainable uh, business model? Um, and maybe even looking at a specific product, is this a sustainable product? You know, And I think people, I, I wish people asked themselves that more. And I wish that was more admired in our entrepreneur culture, because yeah. I think what is most admired these days is just like the quick rise and the quick goals and the quick money and the quick fame and whatever it is. But I think something that is so, so underrated is like, can you keep it? Yeah. Can you sustain it? And um, it does it even build into your life well? Um, and so I think that's something that I have really focused on in 2023. Um, and I think I will be focusing a lot on that in 2024 as well. Yeah, I love I love that you say that. Um, that kind of f me up that mindset of like you know, oh, I made sixty three dollars my first um, month and my second month I made five hundred thousand dollars. It's just like all of those Instagram reels. If you exactly. Like, like it, you'll actually get more and more of those type of things. And it's like, okay, well, if I don't hit that ten twenty k my first first year, I'm just like total like failure. You know? Yeah, it's so it's just so not. Um, it's it's not a good indicator of of like what really is and it's it's just it's so misleading i mean we see all these posts too that are like you know i made xyz in passive income in this amount of time or like i did this in this amount of time and whatever and it's it's ridiculous because you know i i i've gotten to some of those like not to it's it's not like braggy at all but just like i've had some of those experiences you know what i'm saying like I've had like six figures made in a matter of like hours, right? But the fact is, it's not, that is not telling the full story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you saying that you made like $10,000 in passive income while you were vacationing in Bali over the weekend and I'm going to show you how to do it. No, no, you're not because that's like completely telling that's like a seven years in the small, making, yeah. it's seven years yeah. in the making. Exactly. And so it's like people are, people have such a skewed view of what it takes to succeed uh -huh. in business. Um, and it's just so frustrating. And so I think if we looked at it more from the perspective of like, what if I just like did whatever it takes uh -huh. to get somewhere and I, I stuck with it and stayed consistent with it for as long as it takes to get somewhere. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, people's attention spans are so short these days. I was just going to um, say that I was gonna <laughs> say, like that caused me the ADD because, you know, I was blessed to ha be in this industry for when I didn't even have Instagram. I'm a lot older than you. And I was like slow and steady wins a race. Like I would blog one wedding would take me three to four hours to blog. And I would take my big iMac to my grandma's house and just blog till like 6 PM and like, let the like sun go down. And while yeah. I'd be like at the beach yeah. um, playing and you know, now people can't even, or I'm talking about myself. I'm with, I have kids, but it's like, I can't even like watch like a 10 minute training because it's yeah. like, 
my mind just like all over the place just ADD brain (laughs) yeah but I think I think in so many senses we can I think in a way we because I have that too but I think sometimes like if we almost limit ourselves with certain types of rhetoric or certain types Mm -hmm. of media that perpetuate that type of short attention span I think we can like combat that hopefully that's what I'm saying listen to your your podcast It's yeah, hopefully like, I don't perpetuate that mentality. No, it's like you learn, but you're also like chill and like, yeah. um, you don't want to like have a panic attack, but like all the stuff that you have to do. <laughs> totally. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, okay. Last question. It's a 40 minute mark, but just speak to wedding professionals, their hearts, like they're struggling. They really want to do well next year, but they also want to take their time and they also want good mental health and they also want to become the one and they also want their personal brand to be killer. Like, what would you say to them like today to just kind of get them out of their head and just like make it, make it happen 2024? Yeah. I'd say one of the biggest things is stop comparing yourself to other people and their journeys, because I think that is probably one of the biggest things. I mean, that's when I talk about that quick growth and like the reels we see and like all this type of, uh, you know, false information, really we're getting that all because of competition or not competition. We're getting that all because of comparison. Um, so I think comparison is just, it's, it is, it's just deadly and it keeps you from sticking with what you set out to do. Uh, it keeps you from encouraging yourself along the way. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, it just drains you in so many senses. So I think that is one of my biggest, um, piece of pieces of advice for people just getting this freaking work done is like, stop yeah. looking at other people, yeah. just do what you set out to do and keep going with it and stay consistent. And obviously, yes, so much has to do with, uh, getting the right strategy, getting the right coaches, you know, getting the right direction, of course, absolutely. But in so I think one of the biggest issues of entrepreneurship's entrepreneurs not getting where they want to be is that they simply just get distracted with what other people are doing and they think that they're missing out on something Uh, and it's just like no just like do the work like just do the dang work Uh and uh if you if you stick with it i i truly think you'll get there Totally. Um, yes. Comparison is a thief of joy. Thank you so much, Nathan, for being on this podcast. Where can everyone find you and just tell everyone like how to work with you or get on your wait list or anything like that? Yeah, I, I would say, honestly, the best place I'd point everybody is just head to my podcast, Passion with Purpose. That's probably that's or, or follow me on social media and Instagram at, at Nathan Chansky. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of where I hang out the most. And that's where I'd say, yeah, come hang out, come see uh, what we're doing over there. It's, it's a great time. Thank you, Nathan. This is a great conversation. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.